Okay, looks like we are live. Uh, so I'm going to wait for a few people to jump in here um, and share this post around. I don't, I, it, this is, this is, uh, this is new for me. Uh, so bear with me on some of the uh, technical things that I'm probably going to have to do. I'm going to invite a bunch of people uh, to come hang out. So uh, be be patient. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out, joining here. We got some we got some stories that we are gonna dive into in just a few minutes. Once uh, once people people start coming in, I will be uh, getting into it. Okay, let's try this. See if this works. I'm using I'm using this thing called Streamyard. I've never used this thing before, <laughs> so uh, I, I appreciate uh, your patience as I slowly figure out how to how to how to make this thing work, and uh, and also uh, share and and make comments. It, thank you for for sharing. If uh, if you're if you're sharing, I appreciate it. Uh, very kind of you. Uh, we're gonna we're we're hopefully in a, in the next minute or two gonna ju start jumping into these stories. Um, Want to invite just a few people I know or the people that are sort of at the top of uh, top of my head um, that would uh, would want to join in into uh, into the conversation uh, that we're that we're gonna partake in hopefully. Um, so as the as the comment um, as the comment that I put up said, I will uh, I'll be keeping an eye on on the on the comment section. But what I'll try to do is uh, respond to them as we go along. Like uh, basically, I'll I'll talk about the story and then I'll read through your comments and respond to them. Um, that'll kind of be the easiest way I think to handle it. But if it turns out that there's a better way to handle it, then uh, uh, I will, I will, uh, I will do that. I will take any, any, uh, uh, suggestions that you guys have, uh, into consideration. So, uh, yeah, we are, uh, we're, we're going to get this thing underway in just, uh, just a second, uh, or two. Uh, I'm going to make a share into a few groups here. Um, Why can't I make a share? Let's see if this is gonna work. This is I feel like you guys are getting like the view into the into the weirder weirder parts of the stuff that I have to do <laughs> every time that I uh, you know get a get a put up a video or, or and whatnot. So uh, bear with me. I appreciate you guys you guys bearing with me. 
uh, there's like one or two groups that I would like to share it into. And then eventually Facebook will be like, I don't think you're real. Uh, that's, that's usually what it does. They like doing that. They like, uh, they like making me question my own reality. That's a fun thing that they, they like to do. So, uh, yeah, thank you for, thank you for being patient and thank you for staying with us, uh, with, I, I'm using the royal us, uh, thing that I, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. <laughs> um, let's see if there's other people I want to invite to join in to do this. And okay. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. We'll 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 start seeing more people come in. Uh as the time rolls on. Um that's uh but I will be I like I said, I'll be able to keep an eye on the uh on the comments. I'm I'm using something new, something different that I've never uh never um used before so we'll see how this goes uh we had some technical issues uh that i was dealing with uh i tried to use uh, obs and connect it to um to facebook but apparently that didn't work <laughs> they, like it, it had like this insane lag um so i gotta i gotta uh, tweak that because uh, i would like to i would like to use that a little bit more um, but, uh, I'm using this thing called StreamYard, which I believe, uh, my friend Ron Placone uses, and it seems to be, it seems to be doing pretty good so far. Um, actually, it, I'm, I'm thinking that the stream's coming in pretty good. I can see the comments right there. Bam, Jeremy K. Wood. Hello. How's it going? Um, so this is going to be, this is going to be what I'm going to be doing every Sunday. I'll be, uh, live on, uh, on the old Facebooks. And, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, a couple different stories. Um, and you guys can feel free to leave a comment. Uh, there's a link also, if you have the ability to donate, you can donate. Uh, it is not necessary. All of my shit is always going to be available for free for everybody to enjoy, especially throughout this tough time that we are, uh, that we are all going through. I hope you guys are, uh, you're doing well. Thank you, Jeremy. appreciate it. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got my tea. A turmeric ginger tea that I'm that I'm going to be drinking. I, I feel like I got to drink this every time I do a video because I'm long winded. The ginger is nice, and the turmeric um, is uh, is a nice uh, anti-inflammatory. There, if you're if you're a fan. Uh, but we got some we got some folks watching. We got some folks tuning in. I hope your Sunday afternoon is going well. Uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. I have a nice relaxing Sunday planned, uh, myself, a uh, quick little check in here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I've been watching a shit ton of Star Trek. So that's been on my mind, uh, <laughs> where I'm just like, how do we achieve that? When can we get to, uh, warp technology and, uh, and not using any money? Uh, when, when do we get to that point? That point seems fun. Uh, I've, I've also figured out that, uh, Lieutenant Commander Data is my spirit animal. Uh, that's something that I found out about myself. And, uh, there's lots of moments where Captain Picard has made me cry as well. That's fun. Um, so <laughs> that's how I've been spending my time is doing this. Um, I'm, I'm writing a bunch more and I'm, and I'm watching a, a, a shit ton of, uh, of Star Trek. So that's how I've been spending my time. I'm excited because tonight I'm also going to, uh, watch the Sturgill Simpson anime that's on uh, uh, Netflix. I don't think, if you guys haven't seen that, you guys got to uh, dig into Sturgill Simpson. I'm very excited to watch that as well. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, again, for, for new people that are tuning in, uh, we, we are going to dive into some stories. So uh, I say, I say, let's get into it. Let's jump into some of these stories. Uh, I have my notes here, um, and I probably end up reading one or two little paragraphs um, of these stories as well. I'm going to make sure that I have them pulled up here. Uh, yeah, I do. I do have them ready to go. So the first uh, first story we're going to do comes from a website called Minds Unleashed, which is an alternative journalist website. 
uh, independent journalism website that a couple of my friends write for. Uh, very, very uh, excellent website. Highly recommend it. It's going to be stories that you don't normally get in uh, in corporate media. So uh, highly recommend that you guys follow them. The first short story is uh, about rats that show empathy. Uh, that's what they've discovered. The Netherland Institute for Neuroscience, NIN. This is a this is a very different NIN. Some music fans might know NIN as Nine Inch Nails. Very different. The Netherlands Institute of Neuroscience is very different from Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor. I gotta put that up at the top. Uh, but they have uh, they found out that male and female rats show an aversion to creating harm. That's fascinating. That's super, that's kind of super cool to me that, that that's, that's what it, they have an aversion of creating harm. And, uh, and previously people only thought that this, this mentality was only found in humans, that only humans had an aversion to creating harm. Um, and w apparently we're not the only ones. They they found it in, uh, in rats. Right. But even then it's like humans are only kind of, they're only kind of avert in creating harm, right? Like, like we're one of the few animals that literally go to war for virtually no reason, right? And other people are like, oh, but we got to take other people's resources. We got to, but we have manifest destiny, Krish. Yeah, apparently the rats don't, which I think makes them a superior creature. The rats don't manifest destiny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, go to war over, over no purpose at all is, is like the opposite of harm aversion. Um, so, uh, what they found out is that this harm aversion occurs in the same region of the brain, uh, that creates empathy for humans, right? It's just that their, their harm aversion occurs in the same region of the brain as, as in humans, uh, which the, which the, uh, Netherlands Institute of Neuroscience, NIN, not Trent Reznor, uh, they, they have said that this is a deep biological response in human in in all animals really it's a deep rooted biological response to uh not uh, cause harm to other people harm aversion is like a deep biological response it's in our nature to not hurt each other right which kind of makes sense because if you really look back to uh, like some of the older rituals and traditions that we've seen from like pagans and indigenous cultures there's always this ritual there's always this like we're going to give back uh, you know, to, to, uh, we're going to honor the animals that we have, uh, um, we've, uh, you know, killed in order to eat them. Like we, there, there's that ritual aspect to it. So that kind of, I think shows, um, that, that this is a deep rooted thing and they had like all, you know, they, nobody wants the, the indigenous culture didn't want any part of the animal to go to waste. That's kind of a really interesting thing. Um, you know, we're, and, and we are going up against biology right now, though. Like, if you look at modern cultures, like, as we progress in humanity, we are going against this deep-rooted biological response not to cause harm, uh, you know, because uh, because McDonald's and Burger Kings are everywhere. <laughs> I feel like the existence of McDonald's and, and Burger King, like, goes against all of this stuff. Like, it goes against the deep-rooted biological response. <laughs> That's... Like that's what McDonald's and Burger King are. They are they are bastardizations to deep rooted biological response. They are against biology, and I think if you've eaten McDonald's or Burger King, uh, it makes sense that they're against biology, right? They they may they they don't uh, use biology in uh, uh, in their food. It's uh, it's all it's all non biological substances. So I feel like uh, I feel like that makes sense. So this experiment that they ran, um, basically the way they ran it was they had two levers uh, that these rats would run through a maze and they would pull one of the levers, right? And uh, one of the levers, they trained them that would give them like a sugar pellet, like a sucrose pellet. Um, and they did that. They trained the rats so that when they pulled a specific pellet, uh, a lever, a pellet would come out and they'd be able to eat the, eat the food. So round two... Once they were trained to do that, they repeated the experiment, but they added something to it where every time the uh, the rat would pull the lever and get the sucrose pellet, it would also send a, a, an electrical shock to the other rats and it would make them squeal and, and cause pain and stuff. And eventually 
Um, you know, well, a few times of doing that, the, the rat stopped pulling the lever uh, because it was causing pain um, to their neighbors, to their fellow, uh, the, to their fellow rats. And they found out that this is occurring, like I said, in the exact same spot that human empathy lies, which is the, I'm going to butcher um, the scientific name of this, but the anterior cinguate cortex. If there's anybody that's like a, a big science geek that's watching and just listen to me butcher that. <laughs> but uh, basically, it's this region in between both cortexes of the brain, both hemispheres of the brain, right? Like it's it's right in the it, it, the center. That's where empathy lies. Empathy lies in the in this it's just in the fucking center of all of it, right? Which is kind of awesome. Uh, so really, empathy is a full brain response. It uses both the right and the left side of the brain. Uh, it uses the logical, the emotional, and the creative sides of your brain in order to um, it, to uh, activate empathy. I think uh, so. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Now, to continue the experiment, uh, what these these uh, these scientists did is they injected a chemical into the rat's brain uh, to suppress the function of this empathy in uh, in between both the brains, right? And th and that did make the rats not give a shit as much uh which i think we need to do a big study in humans i think we are ready to uh uh to to move this to human trials uh and let's look into the brain of a bunch of congress people right we gotta let's look into the brains of uh mitch mcconnell and fucking chuck schumer all these people that are like <laughs> not willing to help regular Americans where they're like, what if we gave people more loans when they're not making money, you know? And we see, is there like a tumor, uh, or, uh, or, or, or just like a, maybe like a gold coin that's like jammed, uh, in the empathy section of their brain. Maybe it's a God shaped hole because all these people talk about how, uh, they're, they're devoted to God. You know, maybe it's just the God-shaped hole is just kind of like carved out uh, where empathy is supposed to be. And right now it's just a hole um, in their brain. And it's probably not even a god shape. It's just a hole. There's just a hole in the center of, of like all of these politicians' brains, um, like a donut. It's a, that's what their brain, their brains are just like a big, uh, big donut. Uh, and, uh, and what's missing is um, is the empathy part is the part where they they understand uh, humans I think is where it is uh, so uh, here here's what the scientists said could be the cause of why these rats uh, stopped pulling the lever you know before they before they injected that uh, that chemical to suppress the thing um, they they here here's here's what they said I'll I'll read you what the article said so. Uh, this is Professor uh, Christian Kears, who's the group leader at NIN. Uh, and the uh, prof professor says, perhaps a rat stops pressing the harmful lever because it doesn't like to hear another rat squeak, uh, just as we don't like to hear a crying baby on a transatlantic flight. Perhaps they do so because they feel sorry for their neighbor. We don't know whether our rats had a selfish or altruistic motivation, but I would argue that we don't always know the motives behind the good deeds of humans either. Whether the motive that we share, uh, share a mechanism that prevents antisocial behavior with rats is extremely exciting to me. Uh, we can use all the powerful tools of brain science to explore how to increase harm aversion in antisocial patients. Uh, that's pretty cool. I think that's a pretty cool statement. And I think he's right. Um, uh, you know, we, we don't know uh, well, sometimes we don't know what, what makes somebody do good. Like, I feel like when people are just nice to each other, people kind of like freak out. <laughs> They're just like, what do you want from me? What do you want? Why are you, why are you helping me? You, you know, like I, I've, I've done that. Like if, you know, like if there's just like an old person lifting, I'm like, Hey, can I help you carry your bags? They're like, what do you fucking get away from me? You psycho. Like, that's how we treat kindness. <laughs> Uh, you know, like even in relationships, when I've just like been nice to to people I've been in relationships with, it, it it's it's just like, what do you want? Is it is this a sex thing? Do you get do you get a sex thing out of it? And it's like I don't, 
no, I'm just kind of being nice to you because you're like a human that I enjoy being around. You know, <laughs> we're just like we're just really weirded out by 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 niceness, and I think it's because we're not using uh, all of our brain. Uh, we're not using the empathy center of our brains, uh, and uh, because it involves using uh, a a larger percentage of our brain. So um, yes. I think um, I don't. I don't think we, you know, we we fully understand whether this is altruistic or selfish. But uh, the good deed is a good deed. I think we should take it at at, at least we should take it at, at that value, um, you know. So uh, th this also proves that animals aren't selfish. Like that that was a, a precognition that only human beings were the only animals that weren't selfish. Uh, but this proves that other animals are also not selfish, right? Whether, whether the good deed was done for a selfish motive or not, the good deed was done, period, right? And then you also have uh, wombats. They dug holes when Australia was set on fire, uh, you know, probably because of God, I, I'll say. Uh, you know, probably God it's, God's is not a fan of Australia. Um, you know, the, the, the island continent was started as a prison, and God was just like, hey, maybe you should have just left it the fuck alone. Um, and so, like, God had to, like, set it on, obviously set it on fire. There was, like, no uh, no other real explanation. It could be climate change, uh, but it's probably not uh, because God. So, um, and, uh, and you know, God hasn't changed in, in, in 10,000 years. So God had to set Australia on fire. Or it's, just, or it's, or it's because of man-made climate change. Um, I guess we'll never know. I guess... We will, we will know because science is telling us that it's a uh, man-made climate change. Anyway, when Australia was on fire, uh, wombats they dug they dug holes for water to uh, you know uh, sink into them, and so other animals would have water uh, to drink. So um, it, it just proves that 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 there are a lot of other animals in the world that aren't selfish that don't uh, exhibit that kind of behavior. We we kind of it, I think that was sort that's sort of this 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 justification. Um, that certain people on the right wing had was this like, well, nature is harsh and selfish and mean and, you know, uncaring. But here we are, we're looking at rats showing empathy in the, at the same uh, center of the brain uh, as human beings. We have wombats digging holes so that other animals have a water supply, um, you know, uh, and, and if you look at the economic climate um, that we're in right now, where we have a bunch of Congress people that are against uh, against Americans getting UBI in, in a time of need when, when people are out of work um, and things of that sort. Um, you know, it just, it just shows that we, we're, we're less intelligent than uh, rats and wombats. That's what it really shows us. So, <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to look at, look at some of your, some of your comments. Uh, I, I, Mark, Mark Viola. Hi, Mark. Uh, I want to empathy you like an animal. <laughs> I want to care about this. Is great. I want to make a music video with you uh, with all of these lyrics. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we, it's fine. We'll give Trent Reznor credit. I will send him over. Uh, what does Spotify give him? 48 cents. I'll send him. I'll Venmo Trent Reznor 48 cents to parody his song. Uh, Brenda Lee. Hi, Brenda. Uh, I wish it's karmic others. Yes, I wish people would also stay inside uh, because sometimes it does harm. Or you know, just wash your hands too. Make sure that those hands are are, are uh, being washed. Ken, hi Ken. Worship absorbs empathy that would be otherwise directed to other humans via empathy. Oh man, uh, that's I feel like that's like a whole whole video. Ken 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 always leaves comments where I'm just like, that's a whole. 80 minute video that I can, I think, make with some research. <laughs> behind it. Uh, concern for the afterlife supersedes human concern for the here and now. Yeah, I think so. I, and that kind of goes back into, uh, I think, a little bit into Ken's, Ken's previous comment as well from Mark. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think people are people not being present in the here and now um, doesn't make them care about well, it doesn't, it doesn't, right? Because I think they want to go to the afterlife to be good, but I don't think that's an altruistic motive. Um, I think that's one of those selfish motives. So I, sometimes religion ends up being um, like, uh, how did I explain it? Uh, it's like, it's it's something for morality. Um, 
is sort of what religion ends up being. Eva, uh, the Milgram shock experiment already done for humans, kind of. Yeah, I guess so, um, a little bit. Uh, it, it, I mean, that proved it for us, but I think that it, this just proves that other animals are also capable of it. Um, and, it, and it roots us more into the animal kingdom. And it shows that some of these higher uh, functions in our brain, looking at it in these so-called lower level animals, which I don't, I don't really think they're lower level, but I understand what that phrasing um, denotes is, is it just shows that these, these emotions are in, in animals and that these emotions are core biological functions that have helped us evolve to where we are. Uh, and Amy wants to cut all my plants. They're, they are my mother's plants. I am not allowed to touch them. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch these plants. They're, they're decorative for me <laughs> is what they are. Uh, it's selfish for us to think that we're the only ones that are. Brenda is correct. I think so too. Uh, some animals are selfish, Mark said. Yes, uh, I do. We, well, we're selfish animals. We've proven we've proven the uh, capability to be very selfish. Uh, any place, Ken, uh, any place in nature where a community or colony or herd develops to benefit the individual as well as the community is an example of empathy in nature, perhaps not with the emotional aspect that humans may attach to it. That's fair. Uh, one could argue that higher organisms themselves are evidence of empathy or a collective action. Yeah, I think collect I think anything that sort of has a collective ideology behind it um, does show uh, that there is some uh, empathy behind it. I, I, again, like the like the, the the professor said, it's very difficult to figure out whether it's an altruistic motive or whether it's just like, hey, I just don't want to fucking hear this thing scream anymore. Like I'm, I'm good without this thing yelling, uh, you know, so I, I'm not, but to me, I think this is a pretty big, significant, um, discovery, kind of seeing the correlation, uh, and it, and it helps us connect our brains to the animal kingdom's brains a little bit more, uh, and gives us a little bit more understanding of, uh, uh, you know, uh, did you, oh, shellfish. Ugh. Okay, everybody, we're going to shun Mark for five minutes. We're shunning Mark Viola for five minutes. <laughs> but but yes, I do, I do think that uh, this is a, a significant experiment because it does, it, I think it shows us um, that emotions and empathy and understanding and compassion are deeply rooted biological functions and that this, this, uh, uh, this notion that we are... Um, that that nature is cruel and cold and unkind is uh, is false. I think that's it. I think this is a major discovery in leaning in that direction. Uh, so uh, you know, I hope it, it, it's funny because because the right wing, whenever it comes to ideas of climate change, because I brought up climate change with the Australia thing, uh, when when they always bring up climate change, you know, they <laughs> they are they're always like, well, I'm no scientist. We gotta wait till the scientists figure it out, and, and then you know, and then they like always have this cruel, like they have this cruel, uh, unempathetic thing because they're just like, well, nature isn't nice, life isn't nice, and it's like, well, no, we just kind of proved that it kind of is, though. We kind of proved that it is, though, a little bit. Like scientists have proved it. Also, scientists prove climate change. Uh, so, so maybe, maybe what we need more from the right wing, uh, and and like re the corporate Republicans. Is is just to shut the fuck up? You think that would be? That's probably what we need to do. <laughs> uh, but all right, <laughs> uh, we let's let's move on to story number two. Story number two. Uh, this comes from uh, Truthout, Truthout.org. Uh, highly recommend this website too. They do they put out a lot of essays. If you haven't checked out Truthout, uh, some they do a lot of long form. Um, reporting. It's very, it's uh, even what, even like one of their stories is pretty in depth. Uh, they post a lot of, um, again, this is all stuff that you don't normally get in, uh, in corporate media, which is, which is sort of the, the, the thing that I specialize in. Cause every time I read corporate media, I do have one story from corporate media, but every time I do read it, I'm just like, God, fuck it. You, you missed like half the perspective that you need to listen to. Because they all have agendas. Okay, so truth out. Uh, this is a, a a story about social distancing uh, in prisons. 
because because that's an area uh, that that we do need social distancing from because uh, prisons are completely overcrowded. We have a prison industrial complex that likes to make money off of prisons, and uh, uh, I talk about this in my in in my new album that I'm that I'm going to be putting out later. Uh, shameless plug, uh, but I, I do talk about the prison industrial complex and um, a lot of what it is. But they're overcrowded. Uh, they're for-profit prisons in this country. We have the largest population uh, of prisoners in the world, which is fucking insanity uh, as to as to why it would be okay. Uh, and at this point, at this point, we are. I think I would like to say that we're actively running out of things to make illegal, right? Like fucking jaywalking is illegal. Like that's really that's. You know, uh, like we're putting people in prison for nonviolent offenses. Like we've criminalized protests against like things. <laughs> States all across the country, like a month and a half ago, were ramping it up. Uh, this is, I mean, the the criminalizing protest thing has been going on since 2017. Uh, but that, like, they just ramped it up where they were like, if you if you say you don't like pipelines, and you make a sign, and you come up with chants and songs. Um, we're going to fine you $250,000 and put you in prison for six years because we're Louisiana and we think pipelines are people. Like that's that's the way that uh, some of these laws are operating. So some people are going to prison for these crazy laws where, you know, um, and uh, when all this stuff started happening with uh, with uh, I'm, I don't think I can say what the what it's actually called because there's a bunch of censorship going on right now. Uh, so I have to I have to come up with the with the different things. So this really bad situation that we're in, um, forty seven state prisons, ICE detention centers, they all canceled visitations. They canceled visitations uh, as a way to prevent the spread of this this pandemic that we're in. Um, I hope I can say pandemic without social media being like, it's over. He's, it's all fake news, you know. Um, 47 state prisons and ICE detention centers took away uh, visitations, which is like these, this is, this is what people wait for. You know, when you're in prison for that long, um, most of them for nonviolent drug offenses and stuff like that is like, this is like people wait for this. And not only that, there's tons of cases where, like they'll be tried in Kansas, but they'll put it be put into prison in California. So in order for people to go visit, they have to make this huge uh, journey in order to see them. So uh, they had to they had to cancel the visit. But now here's the problem: is that uh, this thing can still spread in prisons because of the guards and the the prison workers and just the state of the prisons themselves, right? Um, I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure when you think of prisons you don't think of sterile environments like that's you know like like when i say prison industrial complex everybody isn't like oh yes lysol an overwhelming amount of lysol like that's not something people associate prisons with um and prisoners are more likely to get sick uh they they are immunocompromised because um well, they're in a hyper stressful situation. You know, if our prison systems were more about rehabilitation and responsibility, perhaps they wouldn't be. Um, but they, but most prisons are 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 violent. Uh, the guards are violent. Uh, they're they're not in sanitary conditions. You know, like when when you have an open toilet three feet from where you're supposed to like lay in bed and chill out. I feel like that's not, uh, a, you know, like a a calm and soothing environment. Um, I, and, uh, from, from my understanding, um, uh, from, from things that I've read, uh, as well as, uh, cinemas uh, is, uh, is that uh, no one is doing yoga, uh, and listening to like, uh, you know, uh, ambient noise of waterfalls. That's, that's not what they, uh, have in prison. Uh, that's not like played over the prison radio is just sort of the ambient sound of, uh, maybe some, maybe, maybe the, a, a nice rain or something like there's nothing soothing <laughs> about it. Uh, so the, you know, when, and when you're in a high, higher state of stress, it's easier for you to, to get sick. So they, you know, prisoners are immunocompromised. The guards are coming in from the outside. We're not testing. We don't know who they've had contact with. Um, and I think in New York, uh, the, the article stated that in New York, 
there were actually cases where, where guards got sick. They tested positive. Uh, some of them died. Uh, so, you know, and they were like, but we only had minimal contact with like a couple of the prisoners who then had contact with fucking everybody uh, because, you know, th we have an over overpopulated prison system. So, uh, and you, prisons make it virtually impossible to, uh, you know, practice the CDC uh, washing, hand washing regulations, the CDC uh, clean re cleaner regulations. They can't have hand sanitizer because hand sanitizers have alcohol in them. Um, so they are, they are restricted from having hand sanitizer in prisons. Uh, and most of these areas are not sterilized. You can't, I don't think you, like, that's, I don't know how they would achieve something like that. Um, not only that, but a lot of the prisoners that people, that reporters have gotten a chance to talk to ha have said that the correction officers are also always sick. They're sneezing and coughing. Um, all the time, probably because corrections officers are also immunocompromised, right? They're also having a hard time keeping their immune system up because they have a super fucking stressful job too, uh, because, uh, you know, they got to assault all these prisoners. It's very stressful. Got to pick and choose. You got to make a list. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Uh, healthcare in prisons. Well, healthcare outside prisons isn't particularly awesome uh, in America either. But uh, um, the healthcare in prisons is uh, is believe it or not, this might come as a very uh, surprising statement. Um, is uh, uh, it's not great in prisons, you guys? Some of you guys might be shocked out there, but it is not great. <laughs> it's super not great. Uh, so. What they're saying is if you get sick, if you're showing symptoms, they'll just give you Tylenol. That's their healthcare plan to take care of the situation. It's really, really bad situation. Um, so one of the things that taking away these visitations has done, uh, guys, it's hard enough for us to like not have physical interaction, right? Um, to not see each other face to face, to not, uh, um, you know, uh, hug each other, give ourselves, Hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a huggy guy. I think every, if you, if you've hung out with me, you know, I'm, I'm a hugger, you know, uh, it's, that's been really difficult is, is, uh, I've been, I've been hugging, hugging Spider-Man a lot. Uh, that's, that's what I, that's what I've been doing is, is hugging old Spidey back there. Uh, that's been my, uh, physical interaction, but, uh, they're, they're not really getting any of that sort of stuff in, in prisons right now. Um, and taking that away, like that's really, really fucking difficult. And that's going to put them in probably a worse mental state, uh, than they already are in, um, phone calls and, and video streaming services, they cost money in prison and prisoners barely make any money as it is. Uh, America's prison system is basically prison slavery. Um, and so right now there's been a big call, uh, big, big push for, uh, free phone calls, free video, video, uh, calls, uh, for, uh, prisoners so that they can at least keep in communication with their family. Uh, I heard Presley Massachusetts said that this is specifically meant to maintain family bonds. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Ayanna Presley, but, uh, this seems like a nice thing, uh, to do for people, but what they're actually offering, what these prison, uh, prisons are actually offering is, uh, they're like, well, we'll reduce the rates. We'll just bring the rates uh, down, we'll, you know, we'll bring the prices down of the, uh, <laughs> of the, of the, of the calls and stuff. That'll be good. Right. That's probably fine. Uh, which is like, and this is no different than how they're treating the, the American working class and poor people in this country. Right. Like they're like, we're, we're talking about Bernie Sanders is talking about $2,000. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang were, was pushing a, an, 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 another UB emergency UBI plan. Um, and you know, uh, you got a couple of these politicians coming out and being like, we'll give you loans when you're not making any money. And then you can pay us back when you've not made any money. Uh, you, you know, and it's like, that's not what we need. You made up money for Wall Street. You literally made up money for Wall Street and the, and the airline industry who's not giving us any refunds. Right. And it's like it's the same way that they deal with it where they're like, we can't just help people. What we'll do is we'll 
decrease how much money you're going to give us, and then you guys can cover the difference uh, when when this is over, and we don't know when it's going to be over. Cool? Yeah? And we're like, fucking no. <laughs> it's a bad idea. So uh, here's a way that Iran tried to deal with it. Um, Iran released 85,000 of its prisoners. And, uh, uh, you know, because they were in a, a similar conditions where it's not going to be good for them. It's not going to be good for them. So uh, they released 85,000 prisoners temporarily. I think once this situation is over, they have to go back to serve their, their, their sentence. Um, but I think we can do that in, in America. And it's very simple. And, and I think this is a very good plan. Uh, if somebody knows how to write legislation uh, and would like to translate this into legislative terms, please feel free to do it. Uh, but here's my plan. I think what we need to do is we release these prisoners and then put them into uh, all of the empty hotels across this country, particularly, particularly the Trump hotels. Uh, hotels are more sterilized in prisons, maybe not the Trump ones, but usually they're more sterilized than prison. I've got, I've walked into, um, you know, uh, putting, walked into fucking hotel rooms where it, it's, I feel like I'm just walking into bleach, uh, you know, just like the air is, uh, you know, so that's very sanitary. I think when my eyes are burning, uh, because I set foot inside of a, 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 a quality in that's, I mean, that's a very sterile, uh, environment. Uh, I think that's what we need to do. We just fucking, and then you can have guards and shit stay, you know, standing outside and you know, we'll have hand washing statements to the stations and you wash your hands and you go in and, you know, you talk to the prisoners and, and that, and that's a way that, that the hotel industry can, uh, you know, have, have its employees taken care of considering you have, uh, assholes like Richard Byrne, and Diane Feinstein who cashed out, who they, they sold their stocks in these industries right before this crash happened. I talked about that yesterday, uh, you know, and, and like, they, so this way the hotel industry is taken care of because the prison industrial complex, uh, can take all the money, uh, that they make, uh, uh you know, from, prisoners and and pay hotel staff that'll be fun that'll be a fun thing to do i think this is a genius idea but uh let's let's look at what, what you guys have been saying uh ken uh check the concept of total illegality where any person could, could be committing an illegal act at any time without knowing it allowing law enforcement to basically pick up anyone uh with sufficient power that it wants to go away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, uh, um, you know, what's funny? I think Star Trek actually, uh, addressed this issue of, um, just because you don't know the law doesn't mean that you have, you don't have to follow it, I think was, was sort of the idea behind it. But yeah, I think that's, it's kind of crazy because we don't, we don't know what, what is and isn't illegal because we don't have the, you know, the entire breadth of insane laws. Um, Consortium News, there's a, a gentleman by the name of John Kiriaki. He was a CIA whistleblower, um, and he's one of the only CIA whistleblowers ever to be put in prison. Um, he uh, he was within the CIA, blew the whistle on them for spying on the American people, and then was sent to prison for, for doing that. Um, he talks about that. He talks about these crazy laws that they have um, that people don't know about. And, uh, and, and they can just be put into prison for, for not knowing it. Uh, Mark, to be fair, they've been criminalizing being an angry Native American for a lot longer than pipeline protests. Fair, fair. I think that's fair. Uh, Bacon's Rebellion, that they, they did do that in Bacon's Rebellion as well. Uh, Ken, prisons uh, cannot be sterile. Uh, I say this as someone who's lived aboard naval ships and submarines where communicable disease conditions are even worse doesn't justify prison conditions it just is yeah absolutely i think it's i think um you uh, that's that's a whole reformation you know it's it's kind of like you've got to i uh, i'll just say it i feel like it's one of those you got to burn the system down to rebuild it kind of things especially with prisons <laughs> like you have to just fucking burn the whole thing down and rebuild it uh, at which point I feel like prisoners would have served their sentence. They would have been done with it. They would just go home. 
Uh, Mark, prison should be a lot cleaner if no, uh, if for no reason other than they have nothing but time to lean, which means, yeah, okay, all right. Fucking goddamn it, Mark. <laughs> Uh, Giovanni, if you come to Louisville to do any shows after this is over, let me, I will, I will. I had a Louisville date. We had to cancel it. Uh, but I will be rescheduling a, a lot of, uh, a lot of shows, uh, in the next few months. <laughs> so, uh, I will be, I will be making my way down South again. Uh, Jay, Jay Jackson, uh, Mark Viola, Jay Jackson, very funny comedians. Uh, I'm starting to become more and more of a believer in the idea that we should just do away with money. Yes, I do. I do too. I feel like it's, it's money is a good tool, but I don't think we're using it, uh, properly. Uh, welcome to the United Federations of Planets, Jay. I know, right? That's, I tweeted that earlier today is, is, uh, I, it, there is no mention of money, uh, at uh, mostly no mention of money in, in the Star Trek universe. Uh, and they don't know how the releasing thing is going to work because they, then come from those unclean prison environments to hotels. Yeah, um, I thought about that too. Uh, I think that's a logistical issue um, that they would have to take care of, uh, but it would give them a cleaner environment to be in um, where it, I, th I think you would at least decrease the, de decrease the spread of this thing a little bit more. Um, there's probably a lot more logistical issues, but, but we do have empty hotels the prison industrial complex makes a shit ton of money. Uh, and right now they could reallocate it to, uh, you know, help out, help out people in the tourism industry, uh, to, to do something that's possibly beneficial, um, beneficial to, you know, people, uh, but, and the hotel people could wear gloves. You could have a, a portion of time where, you know, all the prisoners go, uh, outside and they clean the rooms and they change the beds and they have to wear gloves and, and masks and use, use safety precautions anyway, whenever they, uh, go into it. There, there is so much, uh, just jism everywhere in a hotel that they have to take all of the safety precautions that they possibly could, uh, in order to, in order to <laughs> just for like regular stances. So I, I feel like they would be able to take care of, but you're right. It, it, it that it does bring up a, a, a good question of, of how to do that. Um, uh, Brenda, unfortunately, I feel as though it is already spread. Uh, if they had released them a few weeks ago, the hotel idea would have been great. I, yeah, that's also a good point. It's also a good point. I think, I think it has spread, uh, further than what we anticipated it to spread. Uh, and, and now it's just basically like, let's bring in, let's, let's set up field hospitals. Let's do what Korea did. Um, uh, Kim Iverson, who's a, who's another great ind independent journalist, uh, she did a whole video about facts versus myth. And she basically said like, Korea didn't have to completely quarantine. What they did is they found these cases and then they were like, all right, we gotta, we gotta figure out who has it. We gotta try to cut this thing, uh, off at, uh, at the helm as quickly as possible. And that's what they did. Um, and it, and their numbers, they, I mean, they had a, a lot of people, uh, but that's because the, the their family units are significantly different than American family units. Uh, you're looking at generational um, generation people. So kids are get, coming home to grandparents. You know, um, just average working adults are coming home to the elderly that live in their in their homes and stuff. So, um, you know, I think uh, that that probably did exacerbate things a little bit, but they were on it. They kind of really got the ball going as quickly as possible. And now their numbers are decreasing. Um, I know everybody doesn't want to believe the numbers coming out of China. And I'm a little iffy on that as well, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like like Korea seems to be the gold standard of, of how to, how to deal with this thing. Um, uh, Ken says the trouble with Star Trek economy and Canon at least is we need to discover an unlimited, uh, clean energy source and kill two thirds of the world population. In the world war. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. They do talk about, they do talk about another, another world war. Uh, so hotels are going to be filling in temporary roles of hospital bounds. Yeah. That's also, that's also true. They are going to be to fill in the temporary roles of hospital beds. What if we just sent them to the Trump hotels though? Like what can that would kind of be fun just to kind of see him deal with it. <laughs> uh, just all over the place is the greatest uniting factors of prisons and hotels. This is true. Uh, Mark, you finally, 
uh, you are unshunned. I'm unshunning Mark, everybody. Mark is now unshunned. He is unshunned. <laughs> uh, all right. I feel like we can all unite over this last story uh, because it's uh, it's about Jeff Bezos fucking over the working class. And I don't know if there are uh, a lot of people that like Jeff Bezos. Does anybody know? Does Jeff Bezos have friends? Does he have any friends at all? I don't know. It's very un unclear to me whether he's he's got a friend or not. Uh, my guess is no. My guess is that he's enough of a sociopath that he doesn't actually have friends. Uh, that would be my guess. Um, so this comes from NBC News. Uh, this is an NBC News article. Uh, so like I said, every so often you gotta you gotta look into a corporate media story, right? Uh, you you gotta diversify your your spread here. Uh, so we got a couple Congress people. Senators urge Jeff Bezos to offer sick leave for, um, uh, you know, uh, their their employees, the Amazon employees, especially ones working in the warehouse. We got Cory Booker, Bob Menendez, uh, Bernie Sanders, and Sherrod Brown. Four uh, four lefties, I guess. Uh, everybody's a Democrat except for Bernie, who's an independent uh, out of Vermont. They sent a letter to Bezos. Uh, outlining what they wanted him to do, and I and I believe uh, that uh, uh, Bernie's was the only one that was very strongly worded. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, even in his letters, there's a lot of this, a lot of hand motions going. Uh, let me explain something to you right now, Mr. Bezos. Okay, we just one uh, really quickly. The American people will not stand for this. There's a lot of. I mean, even in the letters, you can feel it. It's more of it's more of what you can feel from Bernie. Uh, is the is their sternness, uh, and I believe his letter was the only one uh, uh, that called him uh, a fucking slime bag. So uh, you know everybody else was like real cordial about it, uh, and he was like, "Your fucking greed is not going to be tolerated. We're coming for the money. Pay your taxes, Jeff. Pay your taxes, or else we will come and take it. Your fucking slime bag." That was in Bernie's letter. Uh, because Bernie's not afraid to swear, and I kind of like that about him. <laughs> you know, he's just like, I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> so they gave him a deadline to respond to this letter, and that's March 26th. So in uh, at the date of this recording, that's four days from now. Four days from now, uh, he has to respond to this letter. And uh, the, uh, basically, they asked Amazon to cover testing for their workers. Uh, in the letter, they asked him. They were like, "Hey, could is it okay? Maybe do you think? Do you think you maybe could do that with your hundred and fifty billion dollars, which is an astronomical amount of money that even God is like, maybe it's too much." Uh, this is the, this is the crazy part about the rhetoric that they use too. Is they asked whether he would shut, uh, you know, shut down instead of just telling him to do it. They were like, "Maybe you can shut down, possibly. I don't know." Think about it, you know, sleep on it on your giant pile of money. Uh, when you just sleep on it, inhaling uh, the smell of the Fed, uh, just you just think about what maybe you want to help uh, uh, your workers and and just shut down and uh, uh, and 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 take care of some of your just you don't have to go you know, to instead of just being like fucking do it, you sociopath, just fucking do it. So uh, an Amazon spokesperson did come out um, after this was said, uh, and they made a statement that said, uh, uh, extreme measures have been taken to keep people safe. And here's what I think the extreme measures is. What they've been doing is that they have been taking uh, hand sanitizer um, and then just squeezing it uh, onto Jeff Bezos' bald head and rubbing that right in um, into his cranial structure um, and then, and then, what they're hoping is um, the the sanitizer and all of its cleansing properties will just trickle down uh, to the to the the working class. That's what they're. That's I mean, those are very extreme measures. Uh, you know, just totally ignoring how reality works is that's an extreme measure. Uh, so here's what Amazon said it'll do. They'll they'll cover two weeks of pay. For patients that have the, the 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 situation and have been placed in quarantine, uh, yeah, that's fucking all of us, you maniac. Like all of us. 
<laughs> like all of us are in quarantine right now. It's, so should your employees. They should also be at home. They should also like be with their families, hanging out, you know, fucking not be fulfilling. This is why you have drones. This is why you have the, the drones can just do it. You know, like had we actually thought about it, implemented UBI and gone into automation, this would be a fucking problem. You sociopath fucking idiot <laughs> like this is so this is so stupid like oh we're gonna offer two weeks that's gonna be fine and then you just come back uh and then all of the other people that got it will give you the same disease again uh but i don't think we're gonna cover it i mean we already gave you the two weeks you know it's just like what do you think we're just made out of money fucking yes you have 150 billion dollars you psycho that's you being made out of money the weight of 150 billion even in all hundreds is is just way more than the mass of a human body. Yes, you were made out of money at this point. So he also has a $25 million Amazon relief fund for 250,000 workers uh, that uh, work at 110 different sites of Amazon, right? So that's $25 million, 250,000 workers. That's $100 per employee that's what this fund has it has a hundred dollars per employee that's like nothing that's like nothing i mean sure it's it's more than it's more than like not having a hundred dollars at all but like fucking jesus man and this is the, but this is the way that they do it, right? This is the same thing as like at the end of at the end of every year, we always hear these 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 stories about how these corporations are doing so, these really nice things, and they're such nice people, and everybody should love them. And they're you know, it's like oh man, look look how great they are. They gave fucking two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in bonuses to all of their like that's crazy. And the way that they use it is like. It's like they gave two hundred fifty thousand dollars to every one of their employees, but it's not for one, and for two, it's a one-time payment that they're giving, right? And it's a small amount. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, they have two, you know, two hundred thousand employees. Everybody got an extra fucking fifteen dollars in their paycheck, and everybody's supposed to be like, oh boy, what a great gift for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you get you're given a hundred dollars per employee, and that's your relief fund. It's just like these people that have this astronomical amount of wealth just don't understand. Mon like the the value of money period they just don't they're just like yeah a hundred dollars is probably good right that's that's like pocket change everybody everybody could use a little bit of a little bit of pocket no it's like that's what we're gonna live on you fucking sociopath and then oh this is the other this is the last thing too is uh basically they were like what we're gonna do is we're gonna offer a two dollar an hour raise um to our employees that's what we're gonna do Yet they shouldn't be fucking working at all, though. You should be paying them sick leave for this entire time because you have it. And it, even if you covered sick leave for every single employee in your company, just out of what Jeff Bezos makes alone, that's a debt. Like that's nothing. That's fucking nothing in 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 the total amount of money that Jeff Bezos makes. Maybe he'll maybe he'll drop down to like a hundred and forty seven billion dollars that he doesn't have to pay taxes on. Like that's that's virtually nothing to him. But Jeff Bezos has a hole in his brain where the empathy center is supposed to be. So what can you expect, right? <laughs> uh so those are those are all the stories that I thought uh need to be talked about that, that people need to know. Um keep being kind to each other. Thank you guys for 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 checking out this video. Like I said, we're going to be doing live streams every single Sunday. I'm going to be putting up a video every single day. Um, right now, I am working on a piece about the Black Panther Party, uh, as well as creating a third party um, and uh, and and some things with uh, uh, something called the White Papers and the Patriot Act. So so I'm, I'm working on a couple different pieces simultaneously all at once. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm excited to put those pieces out. Those will be far more produced. they will be less live, um, uh, more written pieces, less ranty pieces, uh, like this one. Um, there is a, uh, there's a, a link to donate if you have the ability to donate. If not, that's totally cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, give it a like, give it a share, tell some folks about it. 
Um, thank you for commenting. And if you're catching this video after the live broadcast is over, feel free to leave a comment down there and I will, uh, I'll probably look at it and, uh, and respond to you as well. Uh, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. See you in the road guys. Adios.